Hi, this is Wednesday evening. It's uh, 12-23-2015 and we're in our Wednesday night program. We're in the 40, mentioning the 45th chapter, we're going to go to the 46th, uh, the 45th chapter of Isaiah. And I just read the third and fourth verses of the chapter we did last week, where Isaiah writes prophetically that he is naming somebody by the name of Cyrus who is not yet born and therefore has not yet done the things that he will do uh, to free or make it possible for the Jews to go back to their country where they, by this time, will have been captives for 70 years. They will go back and rebuild the walls, rebuild the city, and rebuild the um, temple. As a matter of fact, Cyrus is going to pay for all of that. Uh, they will send Nehemiah to go back and be in charge of the building and um, then they will send another prophet who is an expert in the law, the Jewish law, because they have now been so long where they have not had a temple and they haven't had church. So they've got to bring the people up to par. Now, there are a few ways we can tell if an author has changed. It's a little hard for us to tell because we're reading a translation. But for people who read the original language that know it very well, They note slight differences. It might be the same language, but you know that a, an educated person sounds different from an uneducated person. Remember what they said once about Jesus um, um, disciples? That... Um, they were Nazarenes. They were Galileans. They weren't from a large city where there were people of great learning. And they knew this by the way they talked. I was watching a little bit today. I got the two young birds out. I needed to tame them a little bit. And I got them out and took them in my bedroom and the, and the television was on to Dr. Phil. It stays on in there and if I go in there then I hear something. Um, somebody who supposedly married somebody in another country. Um, and the relatives thought she was being married for her money and contacted Dr. Phil and he looked into it. She hadn't even noticed the language on her marriage certificate and the language on some other paperwork she had. The long and the short of it is she was from Canada and Canada would not uh, allow him to come to Canada. Um, some, the language was very bad. What purported to be a doctor's report says he is okay and we are going to continue treating him until he's all right. 
um, nothing like a misnomer or an oxymoron. Uh, but uh, obviously, not a medical doctor's report. Um, Dr. Phil contacted, or his people contacted, the um, um, ambassador and got some copies of real marriage certificates and real this, that, and the other. And they weren't even the same. Uh, you can tell by somebody's writing. Some people write more formally. Some write the same way they talk. And so it isn't difficult for people who understand the original language to notice if there's been a change in the author or, or in the writer. I wanted to point that out because you may sometimes hear or read that there are there may be others who added to the book. Now I want to check something. Um, I um, wanted to get here to the end of Isaiah. No, I just did. No, I haven't. I want to tell you how many years. Here we go. 712 is when Isaiah stopped writing, or the book of Isaiah stopped being written. 712. Now, we're supposedly in 712 now. The book of Isaiah, let me get the date, is 717. Those who believe, so 717 to 712 is only five years. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, the people who emphasize that there was probably another, at least one other author, uh, I don't hold with that very well. First of all, when you read Psalm 50, um, Isaiah 53 and some of those that go past 33, where supposedly he only wrote that far. Of course, we're, we're reading a translated part. But it, it sounds the same to me. They suggest that that may be the reason he was able to give Cyrus's name, that somebody came back later and sort of finished it. But I don't think so, because of the way he says twice, I have called him by name. I have written his name here for you now. So I, I don't hold with very much being added. But some do, and I wanted you to know that. In case you ever hear it in the future, you won't think that I either didn't know it or didn't mention it. I'm going to read now in a modern version because it's going to get us there faster. And we have two chapters, chapter 47 and chapter 48. And it talks about Babylon falling. 
now you say, but we haven't even got to Babylon yet. And I thought this was a chronological Bible. It is a chronological Bible. This is when he wrote it. But because it has so much prophecy in it, it gives us it the chronological part is when he wrote it not when not what he spoke about because he speaks about things that will happen in a couple of years and then he speaks about he's the prophet who writes more about Jesus than any other prophet and that's going to be more than 740 years and he is the prophet that is the most quoted in the New Testament all right let me get chapter 47 here And he's talking about Babylon is going to fall. Right now, Egypt and Saudi are wanting to get that, sm that small little bit of Judah that's left to go with them and fight against Assyria. Assyria is just getting too strong for their liking. And Assyria is the country that has taken the 10 northern tribes and is holding them. City of Babylon, you are delicate and untouched, but that will change. Surrender your royal power and sit in the dirt. That's what they did when they were sat. They put dirt in their hair and sat at the side of the road. Start grinding again. Take off your veil, strip off your fancy clothes, and cross over rivers. You will suffer the shame of going naked because I will take revenge and no one will escape. I am the Lord all-powerful, the holy God of Israel. I am their Savior. Babylon be silent. Now remember, Babylon has not taken over Judah yet, has not destroyed Jerusalem, has not destroyed the temple, has not carted the vessels from the temple off to Babylon and kept them yet. That has not happened yet. So the chronological part is when it's being written up, not what it's talking about. Be silent, sit in the dark. No longer will nations accept you as their queen. I was angry with my people. God was angry with Israel and Judah. So I let you take their land. God has always said in the Old Testament, that he would not punish them himself when they disobeyed. He said what he would do was let their enemies punish them. If they were serving him and obeying him, he would not allow their enemies to win battles with them. But if he was displeased with them, he himself would not hurt them or damage them, but he would allow their enemies to do it. So he is saying he is allowing Babylon to put them into captivity. You thought that you would be queen forever. You didn't care what you did. It never entered your mind you might get caught. You think that you alone 
uh, are all powerful, that you won't be a widow or lose your children. That means lose their military. All you care about is pleasure, but listen, your magic powers and charms, he's getting now at the pagan practice uh, or interest. Your magic powers and charms will suddenly fail. Then you'll be a widow and lose your children. You hid behind evil with a shield and you said, no one can see me. You were fooled by your wisdom and your knowledge. Keep using your magic powers and your charms. Maybe, just maybe, you will frighten somebody. You've worn yourselves out asking for advice from those who study the stars and tell the future. A little bit of what we mentioned on Sunday with some of the things that the wise men learned. Go ask them how to be saved. People who trust the stars are as helpless as straw in a flaming fire. No one can even keep warm sitting by that fire. But you don't know where you're going and they can't save you. Go to chapter 48 where he is correcting his people. And then he warns Israel and then he speaks to the nations, and then he talks about obeying him. People of Israel, you came from Jacob's family. Remember, Jacob is the same as Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob means surplanter or tricker, deceiver. And because of the way that he got Esau's birthright, uh, he got that name, but then God changed that name to Israel. So whenever you read Jacob or Israel, it's the same person. Um, you call Jerusalem your home and you say you depend on me? The Lord all-powerful, the God of Israel, long ago I announced what I was going to be. Then, without warning, I made it happen. You were stubborn and hard-headed. I told you these things when they would happen. You would not say the idols we worship did this. You heard what I said, now you've seen it happen. Going down to verse 9, where the Lord warns Israel. I, the Lord, am true to myself. I will be praised for not punishing and destroying you. I tested you in hard times, just as silver is refined. Silver is refined by putting it, by heating it and turning it into liquid. And all the impurities rise to the top. I know that happens with certain foods, but I can't think of any right now. <laughs> Israel, my chosen people, listen to me. I alone am the Lord. I'm the first and the last. I created the earth and stretched out the sky, and they obey my command. Now he speaks to the nations, three verses. Gather around me, all of you, listen to what I say. Did any of your idols predict this would happen? Did they say, my friends, what? Uh, do what you want to do to Babylonia. I was the one who chose him. I have brought him thus far, and he will be successful. And now, Rory talks to them about obeying him. He says, By the power of his spirit, the Lord God has sent me with this message. People of Israel, I am the Holy Lord. 
the one who rescues you for your own good. I teach you, I lead you along the right path. How I wish you had obeyed my commands. Now, leave Babylon. Celebrate as you go. He's talking to the people in general. Uh, by the way, Daniel never left. Daniel was loved. He was one of the wise men. He was the one who interpreted dreams. And after um, Belshazzar um, was killed, and the Medes happened to be close, and they were the ones that took over that night. Then the Persians got there pretty soon. Um, he was loved by everybody. And he was probably about my age. Because he was a teenager. Um, when they got there. And they... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who was king at the time, wanted... To, uh, which of those birds that is? Um, uh, they... Um, wanted him and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be wise men. Remember, they wanted him to eat a specific diet, and then they would do certain studying and, and learning. Um, this was, um, they were young teenagers, and the captivity lasted for seven years, so he was probably 83, 84, 85 along in there at that time. So he was already older, and um, they didn't go back immediately. And when they went back, they had to go back and build. This was not some. This was something for younger men to do. And he was always, he was already loved and admired and everything there. Um, now leave Babylon, celebrate as you go, be happy and shout for everyone to hear the Lord has rescued my servant Israel. He led us through the desert, he made water flow from a rock to satisfy our thirst, but the Lord has promised that none who are evil will live in peace. Now we're in chapter 49. And we talk about the work of the Lord's servant. It's quite a, well, 20, 26 verses. Um, I'm trying to make this as interesting as I can. And I'm hoping I'll be able to finish next Wednesday. So then we go into Micah, uh, I think, and after that, Jeremiah, and after that, Ezekiel. We've got an awful lot of prophets to go through before we make any time on the timeline because they're all writing at about the same time. And since they're writing a lot of prophecy and a lot of future things, it isn't... Uh, easy to understand as we go. City of Babylon. Oh, I read that. Everyone listen. Even you foreign nations across the sea. Where would that be? Israel is on the Mediterranean. On the coast above her is Turkey, Greece, Rome, and if you go a little farther, Spain and Portugal. 
on the southern coast beneath her is Egypt, Libya, and Morocco, and so forth. The Lord chose me and gave me a name before I was born. He made my words pierce like a sharp sword or a pointed arrow. Each morning he awakens me eager to learn his teaching. He made me willing to listen and not rebel or run away. My protector is nearby. The Lord God will help me and prove I am innocent. My accusers will wear out like moth-eaten clothes. Those that falsely accuse me I've never worn moth-eaten clothes, but I've worn clothes that have holes in them because I've scraped my knee on cement or something and worn a hole. Once you get holes in clothes, they don't last much longer. None of you respect the Lord or obey his servant. You walk in the dark instead of in the light. Go ahead, walk in the light of the fires you've set. But with his own hand, the Lord will punish you and make you suffer. That's what he says to the other nations. Now in chapter 51, If you want to do right and obey the Lord, follow Abraham's example. He was the rock from which you were chipped. We've heard of a chip off the old block. This is a chip off the rock. God chose Abraham and Sarah to be your ancestors. He blessed Abraham and from that one man, I am one woman. Of course, the Bible doesn't say that. From that one man came many descendants. Though Zion is in ruins, it isn't at the time he's writing this. But he has predicted that it will be. Though Zion is in ruins, the Lord will bring comfort. And the city will be as lovely as the Garden of Eden that he provided. Then Zion will celebrate. It will be thankful and sing joyful songs. The Lord says, you are my people and nation, so pay attention to me. Those who live across the sea are eagerly waiting for me to rescue them. I am strong and ready. Soon I will come to save and rule all nations. If you want to do right, obey my teaching. And pay close attention. Don't be discouraged when others insult you and say hurtful things. They will be eaten away like a moth-eaten coat. You must have had moths. <laughs> uh, I guess we don't have So much all woolen garments or something. I can remember when I was a child, we put stinky things in the closet to keep from getting uh, moss. And I have seen clothes that are eaten with moss, and there there were people who could do a fairly good job taking um, pieces of fabric that were folded under, like under the hem or in the seams, and they could kind of reweave and cover those holes 
I haven't seen that done in a long time. I haven't seen a moth hole in a long time. Hi, Master. Welcome. Now, this is a prayer for the Lord's help. Wake up. Do something, Lord. Be strong and ready. Wake up. Do what you did for our people long ago, like getting them out of Egypt. Didn't you chop up Rahab, the monster? Remember Rahab? She was the one who assisted um, when they first came across the border. Um, of the Jordan River and entered the promised land. They stayed there for a while. They weren't ready to subdue the land yet. They had been a long time in the wilderness, so they hadn't sacrificed, they had not circumcised the boys. They had not stopped from wandering around those 40 years in time to um, celebrate the Feast of the Passover or study the prophets and study the law. So they celebrated the Feast of the Passover. And it was the day that they crossed over and they had been told that there would be honey, milk and honey, and water from wells they didn't dig, and fruit from trees that they didn't plant. And that was the day that the manna stopped falling. The manna that they had for 40 years that they traveled in the desert, and while Moses was buried, and they came back in. Now, um, I am the Lord, the one who encourages you. Why are you afraid of mere humans? They dry up and die like grass. But you've forgotten me, your Lord and Creator. All day long you were afraid of those that were angry and hoped to abuse you. Where are they now? Everyone crying out in pain will be quickly set free. I told you what to say and I will keep you safe in the palm of my hand. And now I say Jerusalem your people are mine. It goes much faster with this particular version because it's not necessary to explain every other word. Jerusalem, wake up and stand up. You've drunk too much from the cup filled with the Lord's anger. You've swallowed every drop and you can't walk straight. Not one of your many children is there to guide you or offer you a helping hand. You've been destroyed by war and famine. You will never be forced to drink it again. Instead, I will give it to your enemies who treated you like dirt and walked all over you. Now we're in verse 52. And I'm anxious to get to 53. And yep. so let's do 52. Oh, I'm going to move this other Bible and give myself a little bit more room. Jerusalem, wake up. Stand up and be strong, holy city of Zion. 
dress in your best clothes. Those foreigners who ruined your sacred city, that would be in the future Babylon, which is Iraq. By the way, I got a picture today in the email. Um, I don't know if it was last night, just before I went to bed. I think it was about 1 o'clock this morning that I sent off the prayer requests. I might have done it earlier this morning, but I think I did it last night. I mean, I may... Uh, I may have finished it this morning. I know I did it last night till one o'clock. And if you got the last um, um, prayer and praise, you heard from Father Jerry or Brother Jerry he was in Iraq. Well, he sent me a picture from a town I could not find on the map. But it's near the Mosul Dam on the Tigris River. Syria is just northwest of Iraq. And it's called the country between two rivers. And that would be the Tigris and the Euphrates. Um, they're on the Tigris. Um, and they had gotten Christmas presents. They had big, um, big bags. Um, I would say the size that of a trash bag. What's that? 33? No, 13. 13 gallons. Um, yeah, I think that's what my trash bags are. The ones that go outside are the ones that are 33. Um, for all of the Christians in that town, uh, the United Nations apparently had taken care of some of the other people that were refugees in Iraq, but not the Christians. Um, my friend, Theta, that I interviewed um, a couple Sunday nights ago, I would like to hear what she has to say about it. She's visiting her two children now, so she's not around for me to ask um, what she thinks about United Nations and other organizations taking care of other refugees, but not Christians. And if you got the um, prayer and phrase and read it, Um, wait a minute. Are we okay? Do we have a leg? If we do, it's not lagging on the other computer. It's not lagging. Ah, is that it? Do I need to go out and come back in, Dogwood, to fix it? Because what I'm seeing, I'm getting an immediate, you know, I've had lags where I could count. Okay. Um, let, me, um, let me close the video. Until the next one.